man named Philip. Now, Philip was a deacon of the church, and he also preached the gospel. And he was a very powerful preacher. The Bible says that he was full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you something. It's uh, it's important that we receive that spirit of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we can be able to do the things of God in the way that only God can do it. Right. But here within chapter 8, verse 5 is where we're going to start. In the book of Acts. And I want you to look at this. It says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip said hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Now I want you to know here within the city there was a revival. Yeah. And it was a great revival, but I want you to notice what verse 6 says. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those yeah. things which Philip spake. We have to understand that the things which they heard from Philip's mouth made a difference with the people because he preached unto them Jesus Christ right. crucified, risen again, yeah. seated upon the right hand of the Father. Now a lot of people don't find joy in that. But I want you to know if you're a real born-again believer in Christ, you find joy yeah. in that. Yeah. And it's good to know that you have joy in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And there was a great revival in such a way that the Holy Ghost was absolutely doing miracles where, where it would cast out the unclean spirits. And, and they would leave with loud voices to prove that God was doing the miracle. Uh -huh. What I'm saying is, is that God is able to do anything that we ask Him to yes. do, but we have to come in one mind and one accord. And you might say, what is the one accord? One accord with the Word of the living God. Yeah. If people will come in one accord, not just during revival, not just when somebody gets saved, not just whenever uh, there's somebody that's singing a song and everybody's getting happy, and shouting, but even whenever the times are, are not going so well, you still got to know that there's something in you yeah. that has revived you and made you alive, that you are not living in sin no more, but there's a great revival that's fired up inside yeah. of you, and because it's fired up inside of you, uh, that you can go out in the community and tell others about Jesus uh, and tell them about what God has done. Uh, listen today, that the mankind done nothing this week in the church. It was all done yeah. by God. Yeah. Yes, when we come into my one mind and one accord and listen to the word of God, we apply it to our life. There's great things that can happen. But if we don't come in that one accord, there ain't nothing going to take place. But those that have come to be redeemed and fell upon their faces and night after night after night, this year altar would be filled up and people would be crying and people would be weeping and, and and they would be accepting Christ. There were so many people at the altar. I couldn't tell you how many people got saved. I couldn't tell you how. Do you want to know why? Because God's got the count. God knows what's going on. I can't tell you all the miracles that people received here today. But those that have been revived and those that have been redeemed, we ought to have that joy knowing that we've been revived. You might say, preacher, was you revived? I'm all in revival. I'm always being revived. We need to know and realize that the blood of Jesus is always working in our lives. That we are always asking Him whenever we falter, whenever we fail, that He forgives us of our sin. That we can be sanctified on that day of redemption where He comes in the clouds of glory and we can go up and meet Him in the air. It's important that we have revival and it's important that we stay in it. That we don't just drop it and think okay it's done Amen. because whenever revival ended here within the cities the apostles those which preached the gospel left those cities and they had to go somewhere else to preach yep. and it left the church to be able to stand not alone but with God through the gift of the Holy Spirit 
that those which are redeemed have also the same spirit as the apostles and the deacons that were preaching that they might be able to understand there's somebody that's staying with you. That he's not going to leave you just because the preacher's left town. That, that there's somebody greater than a preacher here. There's somebody greater than a pastor. There's somebody greater than somebody that just comes and, and you see all these great things happen because it's the person that makes the great things happen. He is still with us. He's not leaving us. He's not going to just throw up his hands and say, okay, I'm done. I'm glad today that revival's not over. I'm still looking for people to be saved this morning. I'm looking for people to be ready to educated this morning. I'm looking for people to be revived this morning and you might say well the crowd don't look like it it's not in a crowd it's in the accord of coming together within the word of God it's not in the mankind but it's all in Christ after revival is all done and it's over I want you to drop all the way down to verse 26 of chapter 8 now, Philip, he was in a great revival in that city. But now he's being called just to one person. Just to one. Not a big crowd. Don't lose your zeal. I don't want you to lose your zeal. Yeah. In other words, I don't want you to lose the excitement don't lose the of who Christ is and what he's done for you. Because we can still win souls over yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've got, we, we don't have much time left. But verse 26 says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, Arise and go toward the south under the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Now I want you to know that the angel is telling him, I want you to go down and I want you to go toward the south under the way uh, that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Now, I know, I want you to really think about this. There's revival going on. Yeah. I mean, people are getting saved everywhere. And you're wanting me to leave Jerusalem. And you're wanting me to go down from Jerusalem, down toward the south, into a place called Gaza that is desert. And it's dry. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, when God's in it, it doesn't matter where he leads you. But wherever he leads you, there's going to be prosperity in his doings and within his work that he will get glory, that he will get honored no matter where you go. And it's not always every night a revival, but it's also going out to your next door neighbors or to your family members or to the hospitals or to the nursing homes and you can deliver the word in dry places. Y'all hear what I mean? We got more dry places than we got places that are wet. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about those who are walking in the newness of life who's being revived by the blood of the Lamb. There's a lot less of us than there is out there in the rest of the world. The rest of the world is in desert. It's in a place where, where it's dry. There's no living there. But here the angel Lord says, I don't want you to go down. I don't hear no whining from Stephen. Nope. I don't hear him saying, no, I want to stay here in revival. Yeah. Let's just stay here in the big city. I mean, where the people flock to me. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But I want you to know, people's not always going to flock. But we got to be the ones who fly to them. Yeah. That they can know who this Jesus really is. I mean, we got to carry him. You know, here, yeah, we got to carry him. We we got to come in there, not just a court in the house of the Lord, but we got to go out in the court of the Word of God, even within our homes and our society. Now let them know revival is still right here with us, and it's among us that we're not dead, but we're very much alive. I'm the same person I was before revival, yeah. Yeah. except I am a little stronger. Yeah. You might say, really? Are you stronger? Yeah, I'm stronger. Yeah. I'm stronger in the Lord because of the Word of God. It, it does something to me. If, if it's done something to you and let you grow a little bit, that means you've been revived. That just means that you, it doesn't mean that you was lost, but it means that you've been, that you've been a, a little bit more lively, that you got a little bit more uh, uh, an ops about you to go out there and in the world and let them know about Jesus. Amen. Why are people flocking Amen. to the house of the Lord today? 
because there's too many people not flocking to them. Yeah. To let them know there's a reason. The Bible says here in verse 27, he arose and went. Yeah. He just got up and he went. I like this man already. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Came to Jerusalem for to worship. Yeah. Well, if he was coming to Jerusalem, why didn't the angel just say, wait, because they, they, there's a eunuch's going to come to you and you just sit real still. If he come to Jerusalem, why is Philip being told to leave Jerusalem? It's because I need him to go one-on-one -on -one with this man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need a crowd to do miracles. That's right. I don't need a whole bunch of people nope. to make things happen. That's right. I just need an obedient servant yeah. Amen. that's willing to go, mm -hmm. that's willing to walk the extra mile. Not, not will just to stay around the crowds. You all hear what yeah. I'm saying? The Bible says here, and he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candice, a Candice, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. Read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. I want you to know that uh, that old Philip, he's on his way. Yeah. And, and the, uh, and, and the eunuch right. is all by himself. And he's opening up the word of God. And he's trying to understand the book of Isaiah. He's reading the book. He's reading the book. He's got the same book in his hand that you got in yours. He had the same book. He had the book of Isaiah. And he was reading it. He couldn't understand it. He, it just didn't make any sense to him. So the Spirit told Philip, hey, go join yourself in yeah. that chair. Yeah. I mean, this is a dry land, and you're out here in the middle of nowhere, but now I've got this man where you can speak to him all by himself. Yeah. You know, sometimes people get saved just you and them. Yeah. Right. You yeah. might say, now wait a minute, preacher, a preacher's got to be there. That is foolish. That's right. Yeah, yeah it is. They got to hear the word of God preached in the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I agree. That's the word of God. Yeah. But once they've heard, heard that, it. once they've heard yeah. that, yeah. once they've heard yeah. that, then we can flock under them and let uh -huh. them know and reassure them of what they heard it's is true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, I want to come join myself to him and let him know this book of Isaiah is true. And it's like it's talking about Jesus. And Jesus is the one that died for the sins of you, you eunuch. Do you know you that are lost or back sin that he died for you? That he wants to revive you. That he wants to make you alive. That he wants to accept you. You might say, well, I've done too much. I've walked away with thinking like that. It's time that you understand that God will forgive you. It is not his will that you perish, but all should come unto eternal life. He doesn't want you to die and go to hell. He wants you to come to him and believe. He doesn't want you to leave this world without him. He wants you to be saved. Be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And without Jesus, you're not going to get that. That's right. You're not going to be able to be revived. You might have come in this morning. Amen. And you think you're here in the right accord. If you really want to come in the right accord, call upon Jesus. Yeah, man. Listen to what began to happen. The Bible says.